Good morning, guys. Another episode. Still continuing on with the pipe fitting series. I appreciate your support. You guys coming in with some good questions. I can see that you're interested in learning more about this trade. Uh, you can make a lot of good money in piping. Uh, pipe fitters, it can be a complicated job with all the different mathematics, but uh, it's well worth it. So this is a little sketch I did of an isosymmetric drawing. And this is exactly how it would look. So if you went out to a plant somewhere to go do a job for somebody, this is exactly how it would look on a sketched out drawing. Now, engineer drawings won't look like this. This is, this is graph paper. This is called isosymmetric graph paper. So this is a special paper that we use uh, in the shops to graft out our, our drawings. So, but this is probably the most common especially if uh, you're contracting under a tight budget and, and they don't have time to have an engineer make you a drawing. This is pretty much how it would come to you. So um, so this is a three-dimensional drawing. So we'll look up here. Uh, this is actually called a legend, okay? So the arrow pointing up symbolizes elevation, okay? So we'll have what's called plant north. Just because this arrow points north does not mean that that your 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 pipe is running true north it's running it's running north in relationship to how the plant is laid out and so the plant if i had a drawing we go by how we find where this pipe's located you'll see here there are some numbers here so x equals 106.9 y equals uh 79.9 four so basically what that means is and i should i should have drawn this out but we've got we got our we got our we got our graft here okay so that horizontal line that's x that's y so anything up here is positive negative uh positive negative all right so if if this is our graft okay this is our graft and we are here and we needed to know where this pipe starts all right we need to know where this pipe starts and it says our so it's it does not have a negative so it says it's positive 106 so we got to walk 106 feet and 9 inches that's where this tie in occurs all right so you're looking at our chart we would start here and we would go in this direction and that's how far we'd have to walk then it tells us the Y direction is 79.4. So this is where we are. Once we go here, let's just say we, we walk all the way over here. All right. Then we got to walk up because the coordinates says positive 79. So if it said negative, we'd be walking, we'd be walking down. But because it's positive, this is positive Y, we walk up. And this is about where our pipe, this, this tie-in right here. This is a flanged tie-in. I don't know what it's tying into. Doesn't matter. And then it says the elevation. So when you get there, start looking up. 86.2 feet. I already know that if, if one story is 15 feet, and this pipe right here is 86 feet off the ground, I got to climb at least... Five flights of stairs to reach this pipe. At least five flights. Because if you... 15 times 5 is 75 and it's 86 feet. So I got to look up. So we're talking about 11 feet. So it shows you right here. Top of steel is at 75 feet. And that's what that dotted line represents. That dotted line represents the fifth floor of this structure. All right. And this symbol here represents a field weld. Anytime you see a circle with a flag and an arrow pointing to a to a position, this is going to be fill weld. So it's going to so it might say sometimes they'll put F W 
if the if the inspector walks this package down with the with the foreman, he might write FW for field weld. All right, so field weld. Um, it may even have a number, a serial number scribbled out here, and what that means is the CWI on the job wants you to put that serial number for that weld, so that when he when he goes back to map these welds, uh, for QC. He'll have that serial number to go by. He'll know exactly where that weld is supposed to be. Now, we got to know where the field weld occurs. And so what you'll do is you'll subtract your elevation from your top of steel. So let's go ahead and do that now. So the elevation is 86 feet. What I said it was. And two inches. Minus the top of steel, which is 75 feet. Hold on a minute. It's still telling me I done done a boo-boo. 86 feet and 2 inches minus 75 feet, 0 inches. What did I say? 11, I said 11 feet, 11.2. So that field weld somewhere in here would be at 11.2 feet. So 11 feet, 2 inches from this, this pipe here. This symbol here. Is an, is an anchor. It's either, in, it, actually it's telling us it's in the guided position. If this line was all the way across, that means that the pipe is anchored. And anchor means that the anchor is a device that you attach either by welding or bolting. You'll either weld or bolt an attachment, either by a, a pipe shoe or a beam or some other form or a piece of C-channel. And you will anchor or you will guide. This one's in the guided position, which means this pipe is allowed to move linearly along its axis. If it's anchored, it's not allowed to move at all. This little triangle here is, is known as direction of flow. So it's so this is the this would be the feed side. If you ever do boiler tie-ins on boiler work and tanks. It's important to know which side of the tank you're on because the feed side is going to be high pressure, high temperature. Okay, if you go all the way down here to this tie-in, they're telling us that it ties into something. This is going to be low pressure and lower temperature most of the time, not every time. Okay, so there we go. Then we've got, it may ask you something like, so this is P1472, so it's labeled... I don't know if it's the whole line labeled this or if it's just this piece of pipe. We don't know for sure. But it gives us a, a dimension. Four foot, 11 inches and 11 sixteenths. I mean, yeah, nine inches and 11 sixteenths. My, my tongue is getting screwed up here. So it may ask you on a test or your foreman may ask you if he thinks you're not competent enough. And I've had that happen to me before too. He say, well... We're running this this line here, fourteen seventy two. Which direction is it running? Well, you come up here to your legend. Well, obviously north is that way. So if that's north, this is south. Okay. So it starts. It goes east. It goes down. Then it breaks back west. And then this section right here actually breaks south because. This is the direction of flow. So it flows this way, that way, that way, this way. So direction of flow is now flowing south along this 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 pump right here, this, this piece of pipe. And our center to center, I've made a little drawing here. So center to center is four foot nine and eleven. So it may ask you, um, what's the cut length of this piece? And so these are your elbows. So these are representing two long radius 90 degree elbows. And let's just say we're running four inch pipe. Okay. We're running four inch pipe. So we got two four inch 90s here. Okay. So remember, if you remember correctly, uh, it's the diameter times 1.5 equals the takeout. Okay, that's the formula. So if we got two of them, so all we got to do is know the the one. All right. So four times one point five is six inches. So we got a six inch here, 
six inch there. So we, we add those two together, we get a foot. So we get 12 inches. So if that's four, nine, 11, the cut length, if we subtract a foot, is three foot nine and 11. So your pup should be cut at three, nine and 11. Now, if you want to incorporate weld gaps, I always say just a 16th of an inch. So that would bump that down to three foot nine and five eighths. Because you're subtracting a 16. Some guys say, oh, you need to do an eighth. You can do an eighth if you want to. It really depends on what your, what your welder likes. Um, I have cut them down a 16th. And then I had this one guy. He wanted a three sixteenths weld gap on each side. You know what I'm saying? So that would throw these pipes off center. But it didn't matter anyway. But um, that's pretty much the gist of it right there. Uh, and then you got these little, this is called a bull's horn. And that's, that, that's actually very, very common for a bull's horn. This might be, this. sometimes it's a prefabricated piece and you just bolt it in someplace. But typically we'll have a, this is a uh, your, your glow valve and your, this little handle right here, this is operator, so it's operator west. So that means when you install this glow valve, it goes towards the west, okay? This valve here is actually, it's a check valve, but it's a block type check valve, also known as a sandwich valve. So actually, this valve here is free floated in, so you would, you would have to open this flange up and this flange here open it up to install this block check valve and you have a gasket and a gasket so they're not it's not typical it's not like a solid made forged uh valve like a glow valve a glow valve is made in one piece okay but a block check valve or sandwich valve they call them is actually it's it is one piece but it's not attached to either one of these flanges you got to open these flanges up and i'm gonna tell you something they don't they do not take out for these so if you got a bull's horn and both of these flanges are cut on the same elevation, you're going to have a problem because this is going to be either taller or shorter than that block valve, this, this block check valve. And so what we'll end up doing is either modifying um, this one or this one, either flange, to make that block valve fit. So this video ran a little bit long, but I do hope that it was uh, educational. Please like and subscribe and share the content. Until we see you guys next time, you have a blessed day.